Making Captain America the first Avenger was a huge risk for Marvel films, but one that should pay off for the superhero franchise. The Captain America reboot is mostly retro, something that has already failed in theaters, and stars a lead man who's never played the role. Based in the Second World War, where weakling Steve Rogers, played impeccably by Chris Evans, is rejected again and again by army recruiters, Rogers signs up for an experimental program to create super soldiers based upon science from expatriate German scientists and the super steroids and Vita rays, yeah, whatever that is, turn Rogers into Captain America. This is not a masterpiece superhero movie in the line of the Batman Dark Knight series, but it's a solid film. Batman, Superman, and Green Lantern belong to a different universe, DC Comics, by the way, than the Marvel, X-Men, Iron Man, Hulk, and Spider-Man. As a self-confessed geek, I know this without looking it up, and I admit to having subscribed to the Captain America comic book as a kid more than 30 years ago. This film's chief weakness is that most of the characters are not well developed, except, of course, for Steve Rogers. I confess to prefer the Marvel comics over DC comics, with the exception of the Dark Knight series. And while the Marvel series has not created a Dark Knight-style masterpiece, it's produced some fine movies, such as Spider-Man, Spider-Man 2, Iron Man, and the X-Men series. Captain America fits nicely in with the upper range of this genre, and it ties the Marvel Universe together nicely, including cameos for Dr. Howard Stark, played by Dominic Cooper, of the Iron Man legend, and Nick Fury, played by Samuel L. Jackson, of the upcoming Avengers movie. The Hollywood zeitgeist says that retro movies don't work commercially with modern audiences, but this movie's retro portrayal is actually a strength. At the beginning of the movie, expatriate, German scientist Dr. Abraham Erskine, played by Stanley Tucci, asks Steve Rogers, quote, do you want to kill Nazis? Rogers responds, I don't want to kill anyone. I don't like bullies. I don't care where they're from. The movie harkens back to an era when people sometimes had to fight in wars without bloodlust, without unnecessary brutality, and without vengeance, but who love their country without hating the other countries. In another scene, a prisoner fears torture at the hands of his U.S. captors. But Colonel Chester Phillips, played by Tommy Lee Jones, deadpan, by the way, brings the prisoner a steak dinner instead and then conducts an interrogation free of torture or brutality. No doubt there'll be a few neoconservatives who will bemoan the lack of brutality in interrogations during that era. But Captain America hates bullies, regardless of what flag they wave. And that's why Captain America's patriotism is a breath of fresh air over empty globalism. Later in the movie, Captain America confronts Dr. Erskine's first failed experiment, who becomes the Red Skull, and the Red Skull mocks Captain America's flag-emblazoned uniform. I have seen the future, Captain, and there are no flags, he says. Captain America responds, not in my future. Go see this movie. I give it three and a half stars out of four, an A-. It is a clean, fun summer blockbuster.